Uh, Tim is our first caller. Tim is listening to us in Pennsylvania, and so we're going to go to him first. And so, Tim, welcome to New Life Live. How can we help you today? Yeah. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. We can. What's up? All right. Here, here's my question. Uh, as I told the screener, I have a, my daughter. She's 20, just recently turned uh, 20, and she's, uh, I think, in love with a guy who's 38 years old. There's a major difference in age here, and I'm very concerned, hmm. more so concerned on how it evolved because it was um, this person, is, she used to go out with his son, and uh, now it's developed into them. T- uh, my question is, how do I approach my daughter, basically, uh, you know, to cut it off? I know yeah. it's tough. You can't really tell people uh, what to do, or even I want to go over there and, like, say my words to this, to this guy. I know him, but, uh, you know, I don't want... I don't know. My head's a little spinny. I just don't want to have any confrontation in the wrong way. Yeah, I can I certainly understand just, that. This just came to light. Yeah, this just came to light the other day. My daughter came home and said, uh, "You know what you have been suspecting is going on. They were going out together for a little bit, a motorbike ride. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. I want to tell my daughter to cut it off, knock it off, and look at." where you're at love is blind you know that type of stuff yeah is this gentleman is he single or is he married or seen somebody no no he's married the marriage is going downhill and that's kind of where i think things uh like maybe in their eyes both their eyes they they justified this connection but as a man i just think 18 years is too too, uh, much of an age gap yeah. Well, e- well, age gap aside, I mean, obviously this, <laughs> this, this is dating someone yeah, who right. is married. There's pre- pre- presenting complexity and complications already. So, Alice, I'll, I'll send it to you first. Like, what would? So again, Tim, obviously, twenty year old daughter, yeah. so adult daughter, and yet there's still a role in Tim's life to play in his daughter's life. So, what could that role look like, and what would you maybe advise him to do here? Tim, is your daughter a Christian, and would you describe what her walk with faith looks like these days? Um, yeah, by title, I would say, yeah, there hasn't really been a walk since uh, we left, you know, or she had left church, maybe in the middle of high school. And so, does, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's really nothing going on there. Does I mean, she, she believes, mm-hmm. but there's my right dad. Does she live with you? Yes. And, and, and why? What's going on that she's living with you? Um, she's just starting school. Yeah, going into college. Yeah, right. Okay, and is her mom in the home? And um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, how has her mom addressed this situation, if at all? Even though you just found out about it the other day. Um, she seems okay with it, surprisingly. And and do you know what what would it be about your wife that she might be okay with this when there are glaring concerns for you? Uh, I don't know. Um, I really deeply, like, it, this just happened yesterday. I didn't really get into details about sure. talking to my wife about what she's okay with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and- I think quickly she said, you know, as long as she's um, happy, I think that she was saying. And I kind of disagree with that in passing when we were talking real quick. Um, but... You know, she, one point I do remember saying, you know, there's nothing you can do. They're both adults. And I'm like, I don't think so. And that's when I started to take off in my head about, now there has to be something, at least I think, on the man side that I can do. I think your your instinct is right and in bringing truth to your daughter about what your concerns are and her, con, her, her at least historical beliefs that she has held, getting curious about where her faith is these days and how it applies to her relationship with this man, if at all. And we'll give you some wording for that. One last question. Um, you said you have yeah. relation, you know this man that she's dating. Just briefly, what's the nature of your relationship with him? Um, I just know him from when my daughter dated their, his son, uh-huh. and then it turned into this, because he left after high school and moved on his own, and uh, 
my daughter had just still hung around the house and, you know, did um, uh, various family events and they fixed cars together and it just evolved into where they're at now. That's the only relationship I have with him. Okay. Is I just know him through when my my daughter dated his son, which I think, you know, like... More complications. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Tim, so the, the cons- deep and I'm just talking to- Yes. The concern that you have is that you want to talk to her, but you don't want to create, you said the wrong, like the wrong, you want to, it's going to be confl- a conflict, but you want to have that confrontation in a way that is healthy. Um, sure. And she came to you and said, sure. hey, what you're suspecting is really happening. Yeah. That was an open door. She brought it back to you. Yeah. And so maybe just approach her with curiosity and, and ask her, tell me about what's going on. How did this happen? And this uh, might sound strange, but you can, I agree with your wife in that she is an adult and you aren't, he is a, an adult as well. You're not going to be able to tell her what she has to do. But if she's open to a conversation with you about just what you think about this, um, the concerns you have, the dangers that are involved in here in this, what's making her so drawn to this guy, you be an open, safe place for her to land when this all comes tumbling down. Open up to her right. about your concerns because she said you, this is what you ex- you suspected. Yes, it's happening. I wonder if she needs to talk about it. And that's why she was right, able exactly. to be honest and say, this is happening. Go to her as yep. dad and talk to her like a man. Talk to her about what you believe this all means and what it could wind up meaning for her future and how concerned you are about that. And do that and love her still, right? Like, I love you. I don't agree with this this is going to cause problems yeah. for, you know, whatever it is you're feeling and thinking, yeah. those thoughts that you have in your head, but present it in, in a way that leaves the door open to conversation. And I think that that's your concern is you don't want to create a big conflict, but it does need to be addressed. Right. Yeah, objectively speaking, too, I mean, I, I think any parent yeah. it, for their, even if their kids are adults, like, you don't want the foundation of their adult life to start out as a marital mm-hmm. affair. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't think anybody would just, if I had a multiple choice test, I would not choose that for, my, regardless of whatever faith component would be. It just it would create too much complexity. And frankly, at a time of your daughter's life where, yes, she is 20, legally she's still, still an adult, but she's still forming into adult. She's still mm-hmm. growing as an adult. Her brain is still developing. I mean, there's all these things that are mm-hmm. still uh, happening in, in rapid uh, sequence that this would only complicate that. And really, I'm. I think we are sharing your concern, maybe in a detrimental way. Alice, I'll, I'll throw it to you uh, to maybe give kind of maybe Thank a you. resource too. Tim, although it sounds sure. uh, it sounds controversial, when we are long on listening for our children and we look to understand their attraction to a person we disapprove of and even validate, I, I can see why this guy's of interest to you. I can see how you built that bond. The process does make sense to me. And then we, in brief, state our beliefs but go short on lecture because your daughter's so likely un, un, not open to hearing a whole lot from you. But it is important and it's our Christian duty to call out sin mm-hmm. when we see it in another believer but to do so with a whole lot of grace and a small amount of truth as small as we can do so if if you can get your wife to join in this conversation after having heard what her thoughts really are and her stance is about this it would be so helpful of course to have uh, her mother's voice in the conversation as well along that same style listening more listening than lecturing and and yeah. then also maybe see if she'd be open to meeting with a counselor to process this yeah. new relationship dynamic because there is something there. You were dating his son and now you're dating him. She's just she be having some thoughts that she could yeah, process right, right. with a the therapist. Um, and so maybe we could help her find a therapist if that's something she'd be interested in. Yeah, absolutely. I think how we love our kids could be a great mm-hmm. resource for, um, for you as well, Tim. And I just, Alice, to your point about doing confronting in the right way, I'm going to give a shout out to Pastor Jerome Gay Jr., who I follow very closely. He said once here recently, he goes, you can confront sin sinfully. <laughs> you know, you can, <laughs> there is a way to do that. And so you got to be careful in how you approach these situations because you don't want to create more of a wedge. And that's like, that's why sometimes it leads to inaction. But 
we should not um, do that so much that we're stepping out of it completely and instead engaging because you can have a huge influence and even in your adult kids lives and so how we love our kids would be a great resource for you uh, Tim so thanks so much for calling in today um, yeah we just it, relationships are tricky already you had all the complexity of what was just mentioned and then you have kind of a recipe for really difficult emotions too that can populate in so many different ways and so again thanks Tim for calling we're gonna go